Good morning. This is uh, Thursday, November 30th. I'd like to start by wishing uh, Colby a uh, happy birthday. I'm so glad you're part of our uh, church family, Colby. And thank you for watching uh, Miss Ann's cat while we were away. You're 11 years old, so you're really grown right up. I've seen you since you was just a baby. So have a good birthday. And uh, Steve Gurney Jr., happy birthday to you. And I hope you have a great day, Steve. Today's devotion is, By the grace of God, I am what I am. This is 1 Corinthians 15. By the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. The way we continually talk about our own inabilities is an insult to our Creator God. To complain over our incompetence is to accuse God falsely of having overlooked us. So get into the habit of examining from God's perspective those things that sound so humble to men. That aw shucks, not me kind of attitude. You'll be you will be amazed at how unbelievably inappropriate and dis disrespectful they can sound to God. We say things such as, oh, I shouldn't claim to be sanctified. I'm not a saint. But to say that before God means, no, Lord, it is impossible for you to save and sanctify me. There are opportunities I have not had, and, and so many imperfections in my brain and body. No, Lord, it just is impossible. What we're saying is that God's not powerful enough to bring us to that point of entire sanctification. That may sound wonderfully humble to some, but before God, it's an attitude of defiance, saying he can't do it. Really, what we're saying is we won't let him do it. Conversely, the things that sound humble before God may sound exactly the opposite to man. To say, thank you, God, I know I am saved and I am sanctified, is, in God's eyes, the purest expression of humility. It means that you have so completely surrendered yourself to God that you know he is true. Never worry about whether what you say sounds humble before men, but always be humble before God. And allow him to be your all in all. There is only one relationship that really matters, and that is your personal relationship to your personal Redeemer and Lord Jesus Christ. If you maintain that at all costs, letting everything else go, God will fulfill his purpose through your life. One individual may be of priceless value to God's purpose, and yours may be that life. The challenge I have for, you, for us today, all of us, is to think on his last statement. One individual may be of priceless value to God's purpose. Who is that one individual in your life? In other words, who did God bring along into your life who led you to Jesus Christ? That one person for me in my life was Pastor Casey. He brought me to such an understanding of God and Jesus Christ. So reflect today on who was that one person that God used to bring you to Jesus Christ. You might be that person in someone else's life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for uh, sanctification, uh, initial and entire. And we ask you today, Lord, to let us stand before you knowing that you can do all things. And Father, let us think about who it was that you brought into our lives and led us to Jesus. And that we too may be that person in someone else's life. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. God bless and I'll see you tomorrow.